Hello and welcome to Wellywood Wargaming. My name is Damon and in this video I'll be discussing my top 10 favourite Black Library novels of all time. But before I get into it, please do like, share, subscribe, check out the Patreon as well to keep me doing what I truly do love doing. Now, for my entire life, since Knee High to a Grasshopper, I've always been an avid reader. I've read, I think, on average, at least an hour or two a day, which is awesome, and I'm really proud of myself for that. Uh, my dad was an English teacher and really did instill that thirst for knowledge and for the written word from a very, very young age, and I've passed that on to my son as well. I do believe it's very important. Now, of course, Black Library isn't exactly highbrow literature, but it certainly is entertaining and it's always been there for me as an extension of my escapism mechanic to get through some really tough times in my life. I think Black Library science fiction and fantasy has always been there uh, for me and provides just an excellent way of escaping into a world that you can't experience in real life, quite frankly, which is why I love science fiction and fantasy in general. So in at number 10 here, we have a war cry novel, which I know sounds strange. I've always been a little bit of a hater of Age of Sigmar and I think that comes from just sheer ignorance and naivety, really. Uh, I had a friend in Melbourne that was like, just just try it, you'll like it, and I did. Um, and I started playing Warcry about a year ago in Melbourne, and I really loved the game. So I thought, well, I need to read some more about this actual setting. Is there any literature out there to actually have a look at? Uh, and this novel, Warcry, Blood of the Everchosen, um, was on there. It was on my Amazon Kindle uh, store, so I bought it. And I really did have low expectations for it, I have to say. But I was very, very surprised at how good this novel is. I know it's one of the more niche, obscure ones, and probably not many people have actually read this, but I seriously do recommend it. If you're a fan of uh, Conan the Barbarian particularly, this had really strong vibes from Conan. I think Warcry, the setting on a whole, is definitely very much Conan. But uh, Warcry, Blood of the Everchosen, a really, really good one, very brutal, very dark, um, not no shred of happiness in it whatsoever, but really, really riveting and entertaining from first to, to last. I thought this was a really excellent book. It's certainly not brilliantly written, but it was a really nice bit of, uh, you know, change of pace, something quite refreshing for me when I normally read about the 40k world, I have to say. So a really good one, Warcry, Blood of the Everchosen, um, and yeah, check it out. All right, so in at number nine, and I've recently been going back to this one, is of course Troll Slayer. Now, Troll Slayer is the first of the Gotrek and Felix series. Troll Slayer almost reads like a set of short stories. It pretty much is a set of short stories, and all of the books after this pretty much have the same sort of format. Gotrek and Felix are a uh, unlikely partnership in the old world. Now, if you like Mordheim, if you like the old world and stuff, these books are just pure old world, and that's what I love about it. Sure, it's pulpy, it's not particularly well written, but it is fast and fun, and just, I really love the characters in this. Um, Gotrek Gurnison is a uh, troll slayer who's on a, a mission to die an honourable death due to some sort of crimes that he's done in the past, and Felix, his newfound blood brother, is a sort of warrior poet, uh, a human and they make a really, really fun duo. They've got awesome character, and they're very, very likeable. And uh, yeah, like I said, this isn't particularly highbrow stuff, but it certainly is fun. And I think if you want to read about the old world setting, then the Troll Slayer series, the Gotrek and Felix series, is absolutely going to give you that real that real feeling, that real vibe of the old world and why we love it so much. So go check out Troll Slayer if you haven't already. Number eight is the Night Lords Omnibus. Now, I have to say the Night Lords aren't one of my favourite chapters, but reading into this book, uh, I got it just because I've been looking at a few forums on like which 40k novels I could get that are outside of the Horus Heresy series that are actually good. The Night Lords Omnibus, lots of people seem to like it, and I can see why. It's an excellent uh, series of three books um, with some awesome characters in it as the Night Lords sort of deal with their own fate, I suppose. What I like most about this is how you have a real sort of sense of the Night Lords kind of want to cling on to how things used to be, but also kind of accept the fact that they are <laughs> fucked pretty much and uh, are falling to chaos. And each member of this little sort of kill team that you've got in there is falling to a different sort of chaos god. You've got a sort of like slathering... Um, you know, barbarian guy who just who can barely speak any words because he's falling to the blood god, of course. And then you have a slanishy one in there as well. It's just it's just really cool stuff. Again, it's not particularly excellent writing, but I just think the the pace and some of the inclusion of some other Xenos races in there is really cool and well described. 
it's a really good series and it's definitely worth uh, worth checking out i also like just how terrifying the night lords are uh, from a human perspective they are absolutely terrifying so space marines in general are terrifying but yeah the night lords i mean shit you don't want to mess with those guys Talking of Chaos Space Marines, in at number seven we have Betrayer. Now this is one of the Horus Heresy novels. There are two in my list, and this is the second one. I think Betrayer, for me, is the second best, or my second favourite in the entire Horus Heresy series. It is excellent. Now if you can make a novel about Ultramarines and word bearers and actually make it interesting, then you've succeeded, because I can't stand either of those two chapters. Here they're really interesting. The characters are excellent. Of course we've got Erebus in there. What a bastard he is. We've got Khan, we've got Angron, we've got Lorgar, we've got Argyltal, we've got loads of really interesting characters in there. And it's just a fantastic book. Riveting and really gives you a sense of how powerful these Primarchs are as well. Um, excellent, excellent book. Really enjoyed it. Now, the Horus Heresy series is kind of hit and miss. Some are great, some are not so great. But that one, I have to say, is right up there. And you could certainly read it as a standalone novel as well, like, like you can with most of the Horus Heresy novels, to be, to be fair. More Chaos Space Marines here, and at number six we have uh, Storm of Iron. Now this is an excellent, excellent novel as well, I have to say, and this is another one that I was sort of surprised that I liked so much. Now I've seen a lot of people talking about Storm of Iron. It's been out for quite a while, um, and it is of course a book about the Iron Warriors' assault on an Imperial world to try and get some gene seed and whatnot. I'm gonna, not going to give too much away, but I think this is the first novel where we have Honsu, uh, who is a, uh, a traitor uh, legionnaire and just really really riveting book the way that it's written is it's just one giant battle from start to finish it is a battle it doesn't let up at all it's just fighting 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 bolt upon for the entirety of the novel and it's not a small novel either but i just have to say it's just really really entertaining and riveting the Iron Warriors themselves, I've never really found them particularly interesting or engaging as a chapter, but this book certainly makes them far more interesting uh, and, and worthy of a bit of love. Um, so that's why I've put Storm of Iron in there as well. In at number five, we have the second, yes, second Watchers of the Throne Regent's Shadow by, I think, Chris Rate. This one's really interesting. I read the first book, Watchers of the Throne, and honestly, I didn't like it that much. I just thought it was a bit meh. The second one, however, the reason why I read the second one is because I read a little bit of stuff about it, and I am a huge Bad Ab War guy. My favourite chapter in the whole of 40k are the Minotaurs. Um, you know, some love them, some hate them, but the Minotaurs, I think, are just fantastic. And the Minotaurs are in this book, which is why it has to be one of my favourites. Uh, Asterian Moloch, the chapter mart master of the Minotaurs, is in this book, and he is so, so freaking awesome. Uh, there's a scene where he is, uh, I believe, confronted by Custodes, and the Custodes is kind of thinking in his head, I don't know if I can beat this guy. He is an absolute monster. He's just sizing him up, and he's like, nah, I don't want to mess with Asteria Moloch. So that's pretty cool in itself. Um, and it's just a really good book. Lots of political intrigue, some really interesting stuff in there. Gives you some good insights into the, um, you know, the Custodes, and of course, my beloved Minotaurs as well, who are ruthless bastards at the very least. In at number four, of course, now we're into the Dan Abnett stuff. Now you might be thinking so far the omission of Dan Abnett, of course, I can't, uh, you know, he is, he is, in my opinion, the greatest author that Games Workshop have ever had and Black Library have ever had. So Eisenhorn goes in at number four. Eisenhorn is a trilogy and a collection of short stories. Eisenhorn, Gregor Eisenhorn is an inquisitor. And I mean, there's, there's nothing... There's nothing that you, you can't like about these novels. They're all brilliant. We have, um, you know, a, a really cool team of inquisitorial agents. All of the characters have got lots of depth. Uh, these are sort of crime novels, I suppose. And what I like most about the uh, sort of Inquisitor books is generally it deals with the smaller people. There aren't many space marines in it. There aren't many. It's a bit more like the comparison between sort of Rogue One and Star Wars, you know, like this is more about the little guys and the little things in the 40K universe. And that's why I really love Eisenhorn and the other Inquisitor novels. So I have to stick Eisenhorn in there. I'm not going to give you too much information about Eisenhorn because most of you, I imagine, have read the Eisenhorn novels. I've read them multiple times uh, and they really, really are very good. So check out Eisenhorn if you haven't already. In at number three now, we're on my favourite of the entirety of the Horse Heresy novels, and that is, of course, Dan Abnett's Legion. This one deals with, of course, the Alpha Legion and probably the most interesting and engaging and just damn right cool traitor legion that there is if you ask me the alpha legion 
This this book reads very differently to the rest of the Horus Heresy series. It is a, a nice standalone novel and quite a bit of a, a nice departure from the sort of bolter porn of some of the other ones. This one is full of sort of intrigue and espionage as the uh, Alpha Legion kind of like infiltrate an Imperial world and stuff. It's just really cool. Some awesome stuff in it. Um, and I'm not going to give anything away too much about this one. Just go and read it because if you don't know much about the Alpha Legion, you never will do. But this book certainly sheds some light on them and how they how they operate as a chapter is just really, really cool. In at number two is probably one that you haven't heard of is the Conrad trilogy. Now, Conrad is the first book, I believe, by David Ferring. Uh, the second book was Shadowbreed and the third book was Warblade. Now, Warblade is probably worth giving a miss. It's, it's the least best one in the in the series. But Conrad came out, I believe, in the late 80s or the early 90, 90s. And it's most definitely an absolute pure old school old hammer old world novel it's got some really really interesting stuff in it this is when beastmen used to be all different types of animals and stuff conrad himself it's kind of like he's he's clearly a sort of reincarnation of sigma to a certain degree which is really cool um sigma reborn in a village as a child his whole family get killed by beastmen and orcs and stuff and it's really brutal and nasty i read this as a kid gave me nightmares honestly Uh, this is probably the first book i ever read um, in the Warhammer world, and I absolutely loved it. I used to have dreams and nightmares about this. And the second book, Shadowbreed, was particularly excellent. Um, it's not, you know, it's certainly not very well written. If you go and read it now, some of the lore just doesn't exist anymore. It's so the canon's changed a little bit as well. But I, when I was a kid, I found this fantastic. I, I have to go back and read it again sometime soon if you can get hold of it. It's quite hard to find. But the Conrad trilogy is in there at number two for good reason, I think. Um, and let me know down in the comments if you've ever read any of these books because I think they're I think they're really interesting and definitely worth checking out. In at number one, of course, we have Dan Abnett's finest work, or at least I believe his finest work, with Gideon Ravenna's trilogy. Now, Ravenna used to work with uh, Gregor Eisenhorn. Now, you might be thinking, why haven't I got Eisenhorn in number one? But I just think Ravenna, I just prefer Ravenna. I think Ravenna's a more interesting character. He is, uh, as Chris Morris would say, quadraspazed on a life glug. He is a psyker, a high level inquisitor psyker who exists in a floating psi chair with psi cannons on it. Basically, this guy lives in a coffin, a flying coffin, uh, and the thing I love most about Ravenna, it's the, it's pretty much the same format as Eisenhorn with all the Inquisitor agents and stuff like that. But the thing I love most about Ravenna is he has so many moments of introspection and like weakness, and it's it's his mental health <laughs> is always the sort of crux of the matter, and he's always dealing with the fact that he's he's this handicapped guy in a wheelchair. And uh, there's just some really, really sort of heartbreaking stuff in it. Um, one of the inquisitorial agents as well, his um, interrogator, has some incredibly interesting moments and sorts of inner, inner dialogue and stuff about, you know, not being good enough. And I don't know, I just, there's a lot to like about Ravenna. I've, I find the, um, the environment and the lore and stuff in the Ravenna novels slightly better than Eisenhorn. I mean, they're pretty similar, but I just prefer Ravenor. Uh, in, in general, I just think he's a, he's an amazing character and just so beautifully written. I think Dan Abnett is um, definitely the cream of the crop when it comes to the level of the writing in these books. Anyway, that is my top ten so far. Now, of course, there aren't there aren't a few in there. Uh, I'm, I'm, you're probably screaming out like, "Why isn't Gordon's Ghosts in there? Why isn't this in there?" But you know, I've read them all. I love them all, and I love every Black Library novel that I've, I've read pretty much, except for a few key ones. But Those are just the sort of 10 that I really, really do love that I thought I'd put in there for you. And if you haven't read them, please do go and read them and sort of share some of your thoughts and opinions about these down below in the comments. I'd really like to know um, because, yeah, I do love these novels very much. Anyway, I'll catch you in the next video. Peace out. (laughs) 